Hello again, and welcome to another screencast where we're going to be thinking about computing the exact values of a definite integral. This time we're going to be focusing on how to use definite integral properties to help us calculate definite integral values. We're going to start with this function h of x here, and as you can see, this goes uh, from 0 to 6 on the x-axis. I'm going to move this over here so you can see the y-axis. And uh, it's composed entirely out of straight line segments. So I want to give you a little review question to start with. As a review, I would like for you to pause the video and try to evaluate the integral from 0 to 6 of h of x dx. Okay, so this might take a few minutes because there's uh, several things to do. If you've forgotten how to do this, go back to the previous screencast and just do a quick review. But once you've done the calculations, come on back, unpause the video, uh, think about what your answer is, and let's check our work. So the answer here is going to be that the integral from 0 to 6 of h of x is exactly 6. And the reason that is is because this is a very nicely geometrically behaved uh, function here, pretty clearly. It's made entirely uh, up out of line segments. And so I can just block off uh, chunks of area that are easy to calculate. Like, for example, uh, pretty clearly I might want to go from 0 to 2. Okay, the area there, that's just a rectangle, and so its area is equal to 6. It's got a base of 2 and a height of 3. So the integral just from 0 to 2 would be 6. Now the integral from 2 to 4, that's just a simple triangle with a base of 2 and a height of 3, so its area is 3. And then this um, triangle here from 4 to 6 is a triangle, so its area is 1 half base times height. Its base is equal to 2, and its height is technically negative 3. Now remember, we always treat area that is below the horizontal axis as being negative. And so this is an integral value of negative 3. And so this total area comes out to 6 plus 3 plus negative 3, and then ends up equaling 6. So now we're going to use this fact that the integral from 0 to 6 of h of x is equal to 6 to um, calculate three other integrals that are related to this. Okay, And we're going to be using the properties of integration that are given to you in your textbook to do this. And importantly, we want to see what the limitations of those properties are. Like what, what do the properties not say in addition to what they do say? So let's begin with the first integral here in the blue, the integral from 0 to 6 of 2 times h of x dx. Well, the property that pertains to the situation says it's a constant multiple rule, which says just as with derivatives, if I have a constant multiple times a function, I can simply remove that constant multiple out in front of the, uh, of the integral, just like I can do it in front of a derivative. So this is going to be 2 times the integral from 0 to 6 of h of x dx. And now the integral from 0 to 6 of h of x dx is known to be equal to 6. So this is 2 times 6, which is 12 in the end. And we used an existing integral right up here uh, to calculate a new integral. And I just realized that I forgot to put in a dx right here. Uh, don't make that mistake. That should be the, the integral from 0 to 6 of h of x times dx to get the notation exactly right. Now, onto the second integral here in the blue, it's the integral from 3 to 3 of h of x dx. Now, you might think at first glance that we have to go back to the picture and look at the uh, area from 3 to well, to 3. And if you do that, that's not wrong, but just realize what area would that be? That would be this quote-unquote area. Well, that's just a straight line segment. That has no area. And that's the gist behind the rule in your textbook that says that the integral of any function from a point to itself is automatically equal to 0. Now, finally, let's look at this last one here. This is kind of an interesting one. What is the integral from 0 to 6 of x times h of x dx? The answer here is that we don't know yet. We don't have a rule that tells us how to handle this situation because this is a variable and not a constant. Okay, very importantly, we have no rule for integration that tells me that I can pull a variable out in front of an integral. It's also not going to be the case that this is equal to the integral from 0 to 6 of x times dx times the integral from 0 to 6 times h of x dx. That is not true uh, because we have no rule for it. Uh, and it's going to turn out not to be true for better reasons than that. But we don't have anything that warrants splitting apart an integral by a product like this. So we do not know how to answer that particular question yet. 
Now onto some questions that we do know how to answer. Let's throw in another function into the mix here. We're gonna continue using our h of x function from the, uh, from the slide, from the, the, uh, the plot. And now we're gonna suppose that f of x is another function and such that it's integral from zero to six. And here again, I left off my dx. Can I erase that and start over? The integral from zero to six of f of x dx is equal to 10. So just take my word for it that this integral is equal to 10. We don't know what f looks like, but we do know the value of its integral. So can we compute the rest of these? And I think we can. So what's the integral from zero to six of f of x plus h of x? Well, we have a rule for integrals that says I can split this up into one integral, f of x dx, plus the other integral. Uh, unlike products, we can split up integrals along sums. Again, this is a lot like a derivative rule, and the fact those two are very closely related. Okay, so we know the value of the first integral, we said that was equal to 10, and the value of the second integral we know is equal to six. So the value of the sum, uh, f of x plus h of x, its integral from zero to six is 16. In the next one, we're gonna combine some of these rules together. What's the integral from zero to six of three times f of x minus four times h of x? Well, we can do a couple of steps here. I can split this up into two integrals, zero to six, three f of x dx minus, here's the second integral, zero to six, four h of x dx. Okay, just so I can split up by a, a sum, I can also split up by a difference. And now I have constant multiples, so I can pull the three out in front and the four out in front here. So this is gonna be three times the integral of f of x dx, and that is equal to 10, minus four times the integral of h of x uh, from zero to six, and that is equal to six. So that comes out to be 30 minus 24, and that is equal to six. Finally, let's get down here at the bottom. What's the integral from six to zero? This looks a little funny right here, from six to zero, of h of x minus two f of x. Well, let's uh, first of all note that I'm going from uh, the, the lower limit of integration is larger than the upper limit of integration. So one of the rules that we have says that I can swap those limits of integration out as long as I introduce a negative sign. Swapping the limits of integration puts a negative sign on the value of the integral. And this is the integral of h of x minus two f of x dx. And now much of this uh, can now proceed as we normally think of it. This is gonna be negative. Uh, the integral of h of x was six. The two times the integral of f of x is going to be, is going to be uh, two times 10. And this uh, works out to be positive 14. Okay, so there's some examples of if you know the value of certain definite integrals, then you can compute the value of related definite integrals in some cases, but not all cases, as we remember, uh, using the rules that are developed in the section. Thanks for watching.